Hey, guess what came in the mail yesterday? I am so excited. It's a vintage pre-1937 Speedex semi-automatic Morse key. Let me zoom in on the camera here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So both of these keys are Speedex keys. This is a late 1960s vintage straight key. And by straight key, it's basically just an on-off switch. It's normally open and you touch it and close the contacts and your radio makes that side tone beep that you can hear as it's transmitting a signal. This is called a semi-automatic uh, bug, is the nickname for it. In this key, in one direction, this way, will make a tone which you can use for the long tones, dashes. But unlike this key, where you have to repeatedly make all the dots, this key automatically makes the dots mechanically. So that's why they call it semi-automatic, because you have to make your own dashes, but the key will make your own uh, dits for the Morse code signal. So if I hold this key this way, you can hear it's making those dits by itself. So let me zoom the camera in and show you this in a little more detail. As I said before, a Morse key is simply a switch. And so here you can see a simple one that I just made out of a piece of brass. It's basically connecting two wires. And when you hold the switch down, it's keying the radio to alternate the uh, carrier signal as it sends it out. Now, in our modern world where we have high-tech electronics, a key like this produces tones through what's called a keyer, which is a little unit that generates short tones and long tones automatically. So here's a little key I made out of a um, hacksaw blade and some wood and some other things. And so when I move this key, it's basically sending pulses to a small keyer, and the keyer generates the tone. I'm really not generating tones here. So you can hear how everything is very mathematically precise with a modern key like this. Everything is the proper length, and I can change the speed of it just by redialing my keyer here. Or I can slow it way down. Okay, just with a simple knob. And that's the modern world we live in. But let's go back almost a hundred years. And the cool thing about it is that this ancient bug, this 1930s semi-automatic bug, works just as well today as it did back in the 1930s. How awesome is that? Let me give this disclaimer. I am brand new to Morse code, so I can send slowly and receive slowly on the radio. So with that out of the way, knowing that I'm a total amateur, but you know what? This is amateur radio. It's all about having fun. So as I said before, this straight key here uh, is made by the company Speedex, and this is probably a late 60s vintage, I'm guessing. So, if you're not familiar with amateur radio, when you're sending out a signal, it's a broadcast signal to everyone. It's not a unique conversation like between you and someone else on a cell phone. So, this signal is blasting out all over the place, and so when you want to speak with someone, you send a word called CQ. So basically, I'm calling, you know, anyone listening, anyone, Bueller, Bueller, that kind of a thing, right? So uh, when you find a, an unused spot on the radio where it's fairly quiet, you typically send a little Q sign called QRL question mark, 
And that's basically asking, hey, is anyone else on this frequency? Am I interrupting a conversation that maybe I can't quite hear very well, but is active on this frequency? So you send out your QRL. And if no one comes back and said, yeah, yeah, we're talking, don't bother us right now. Then you send CQ and you send it maybe twice or three times. And then you identify yourself. So you send CQ, 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 this is, or I am, and that is the letter D and E in Morse code. And then you send your call sign or your radio license, kind of like a license plate number for your car. The government licenses you as, a, as your own radio station, basically. And then you follow it with a, sort of a conclusion to let folks know that you're going to stop sending for a second, and that's typically the letter K or KN if you were trying to reach a particular station. So with the old-fashioned straight key, uh, 60s version, where you have to make your own dots and dashes, it's just basically a switch. So if I didn't get a response back from the QRL question mark, then I would send my message to see if anyone's listening and would like to to talk and it would sound like this Okay, and again, I apologize being so new. My fist is not very sophisticated, if I may use that expression. Okay, so now you have to picture yourself. You are pre-World War II, and you have a day job of listening and sending Morse code. So you're sitting here all day long, eight hours a day, tapping out this code with your hand trying to send these fast tones and we would call it like carpal tunnel syndrome today they used to call it glass arm i mean you can really get messed up by that sort of repetitive motion injury so one solution to that was these bugs a semi-automatic bug so basically how fascinating this is, is that it's driven by a pendulum that swings back and forth like a grandfather clock or like a tuning fork. And remember, the cool thing about a pendulum is as it loses energy, it doesn't change in frequency. It's just the amplitude of the vibration dies out. Like if you have a tuning fork and you're tuning a musical instrument in Boing, you know, you, you strike it on something and it gives a tone. Well, the tone doesn't decrease. In other words, the frequency doesn't change as the energy in that tuning fork vibration falls away. It simply gets quieter and then just stops. And so this part of the key here is basically that. It's like a, a pendulum that's on a piece of spring metal. And you have a weight that you slide in and out which alters the speed and these were set up to to be way faster than a straight key like this now because i'm so brand new i had to kind of slow down this is kind of like a porsche here and i'm like at the you know the chevy level so i had to slow this down i took one of the weights off the shaft and i drilled a hole the diameter of the shaft in a piece of a fishing weight soft metal fishing weight and stuck it on the end and i also put a little piece of foam on the spring switch here so these are the two contacts that make the dits and you can hear i've got it nice and slow for beginners like me so you can see this thing wiggling Uh, the other problem is you have to stop it from shaking and so there's a little piece of metal here where this comes into contact and it acts like a break and it stops it so when i push the bar this way i get a solid tone and when i push it this way 
I get these beeps and this will go screaming fast but I've got it slowed way down so remember I did this calling CQ on this let me try it on this bug and you can hear the difference You can see I'm not very good at, at this bug yet. I just got it yesterday and I've been practicing a little bit with it. Well, there you have it. The SpeedX semi-automatic bug from the 1930s. That's all for right now. Thanks so much for watching.